All the young dudes by Miss King been on. on. Chapter 100, Sixth Year, Boundaries. I can't help from crying. Oh no boy, you ain't done nothing wrong. You just made me feel so good. It hurts me. Cause I've been without you so long. And now I've got a good kind of hurt. I got to scrub, I've got a good kind of hurt. Oh, boy, oh boy, you make me, you really make me come alive. Friday, 12th November 1976. They were caught, of course, just Sirius and Remus. Peter's quick thinking had got him out of it, and James had run fast enough in time. He wanted to tell McGonagall that the whole thing had been his idea, but Sirius wouldn't let him. The head of house gave them one of the worst dressing downs they'd had in years, made all the worse by the fact that she was clad in a tartan nighty and dressing down, which was not amusing in the slightest, but extremely terrifying. They stood in her office, heads hung, dripping pus until she dismissed them to bed. Twenty points lost, and attention until Christmas. Ah, well. You both have an hour free before lunch tomorrow, she said, as a part in Barb. I expect both of you to report to the dungeons in order to clean up your mess. Without magic. Sirius was furious, and after he'd washed and went to bed without another word, Pete sat on the end of his own bed, looking pale-faced and worried. I'm really sorry, he whispered to Remus, desperately. I panicked. Sometimes I just lose control when I'm scared. It's okay, Remus replied, tiredly. It's only detention. Anyway, James piped up from his bed. They didn't find any of the puffballs we had. Yet. James was quite right, and in a sublime twist of fate, the Bobo Tuba puffballs exploded early the next morning, just as most of the Slytherin students were on their way from the dungeons to the Great Hall for breakfast so at least the evening had not been a complete waste of time. It was you two, Lily stared at Remus, amazed, when he told her why he couldn't meet her in the library before lunch. Not Black and Potter, Black and you! Don't have to act that surprised, he frowned. I'm capable of being an idiot as much as anyone else's. No, but I thought you and Sirius were on the outs. Why would you think that? Oh, something Mary said, I suppose. What did Mary say? Remus felt a flare of each shoot up his neck. Had Sirius told Mary something? Some stupid slip of the tongue while they were cozying up to each other? What did Mary say? Remus felt a flare of each shoot up his neck. Had Sirius told Mary something? Some stupid slip of the tongue while they were cozying up to each other? I don't know. Lily looked mildly surprised. Ask her. I can't really remember. I just thought she said something about the two of you not talking. Anyway, if you could please try not to destroy any more bathrooms this year. Gryffindor's got the lowest house points already, and it's not even Christmas. The surprise corridor attacks had lost 20 more house points from Gryffindor, and an extra nice detention for Remus and Sirius. James was terribly guilty, but Sirius' sense of chivalry and honour got in the way, and he still wouldn't let them confess. Of course... It was a very different story later that day when he and Remus were standing outside the cooling off bathroom waiting for Filch to arrive with buckets and mops. Bloody Wormtail, this is all his fault. No it isn't, Remus yawned, leaning against the wall. He hadn't had enough sleep. The little twerp ran away like the vermin he is. Hey, be nice, Remus frowned. He only did that because someone got overexcited and blew up all those mushrooms. I was thinking on my feet, Sirius raised his chin, defiantly. You weren't thinking at all. Well, you weren't doing anything. I was trying to hide it. If we did in the box and got under the cloak, no one would have got in trouble at all. We didn't say that at the time, Sirius snapped. You didn't give me the chance. He still didn't have to run away, Sirius folded his arms, leaning against the opposite wall. Tired and grumpy, Remus spat back. James ran away too. Don't see you cursing his name. Sirius glared at him furiously. How dare anyone speak against James Potter in the presence of Sirius Black? 
Remus rolled his eyes and stared at the ceiling until Filch arrived. Argus Filch was one of the most unpleasant adults Remus had ever met. Matron would have liked him. A bitter, spiteful, creeping man on the wrong side of middle age. Filch was a caretaker and a sneak, who seemed to hate most students more than anyone who worked in school really ought to. This was never more evident when he was permitted to administer detentions. He dropped two large wooden buckets at their feet with a malicious grin on his face and pushed the door open. Overnight, the pus seemed to have dried and left a thick yellowish crust over most of the surfaces that it had hit. Remus wrinkled his nose. Filch handed them both mops and scrubbing brushes. I'll be back to check on you in two hours, he said. You ought to be done by then. No ones in no funny business. He sneered as he left them to it. Remus looked at Sirius, who was obviously still annoyed with him. He straightened his back. I'll start over there, he nodded to the far end of the bathroom. You go over there, he indicated at the opposite end. Fine, Remus shrugged, lifting his bucket and filling it at the sink. Yes, actually, that was perfect. They'd keep to their own sides and just get this stupid thing over with. Sirius still wasn't talking to him and turned his back, working in silence. Remus followed suit. Chew could play at that game. Sirius was making it much easier. Remus would never admit it, but he didn't mind cleaning and actually found it quite satisfying. As disgusting as the puss looked, it came away from the white tile easily with a bit of soap and water, so the work wasn't too physically taxing until it came to wiping down the walls. This was harder, because all of the reaching and stretching which tired him out made his shoulders ache. Additionally, Boba Tuba Puss wasn't actually Puss, according to the herbology textbook Remus had skimmed in a hurry before turning up to clean it, and that it wasn't dirty or toxic. In fact, it had several healing properties, and while this gunk was from an accidental crossbred strain, it probably couldn't do any more harm than pumpkin juice. The little bathroom was eerily quiet, with the two boys silently working and only the occasional slushing sound of them filling up their buckets or swabbing the floor. Remus didn't mind the cold atmosphere either. It actually helped him concentrate. He had known for a long time that his feelings for Sirius rarely got in the way of his ability to be irritated by Sirius. By the time the first hour was up, they had managed to remove all traces of the mess and all that was left to do was the final rinse down. Remus rinsed his bucket a few more times and took the opportunity to wash his hands in his face, which had grown up from exertion. Sirius joined him at the sink, but they didn't speak. Nearly finished, Remus tried, tentatively. Sirius snorted and gnawed. No thanks to Wormtail. Shut up about Wormtail, will ya? Remus said, exasperated. Grow up! Sirius frowned and said nothing. He washed his hands in his face too. Remus tried not to wash. He turned back to his own wall and began squeezing clear water across it, wiping away what was left of the soap suds. A shadow appeared at his shoulder and he braced himself for more bickering. You missed a bit, Surrey soft, grumpily, elbowing Remus out of the way and scrubbing it himself. Affronted, Remus scowled back at him. Thought we were sticking to our own sides. Yeah, for you could be trusted to do a decent job. I didn't have you breathing down my neck the whole time. You're so sensitive, Sirius snapped. Nah, you're just acting like a prick, Remus elbowed him, harder than he really meant to. Sirius shoved him against the wall, and Remus slipped, grabbing Sirius to steady himself. Furious, he pushed him back. Wanker, he said. Sirius kissed him. Sirius kissed like nobody else, languid, firm, and unhurried. Remus responded instantly, hands fist in the material of Sirius's shirt, wanting to run his fingers through the other boy's hair. But Sirius broke away before he could, stepping back, looking horrified with himself. His lips were pink and shining, slightly parted. Remus had to look away. Remus, um, shit, I'm sorry. I don't know what keeps happening to me. It's okay, Remus said, not meeting his eyes. You know I'm not, uh... Yeah, Remus said. Yeah, of course, me neither. He said it quickly and without thinking. He said it to stop Sirius saying that word. They were quiet for a bit more. Remus's heart was racing. 
could hardly think straight. He reached out, catching the thin white fabric of Sirius's shirt between his fingers, and tugging it slightly, finally meeting Sirius's eyes. No one's going to find out, Remus said, quietly, echoing something he had been told once. Sirius gazed back at him, his eyes burning. You won't say anything? Remus shook his head as Sirius came a little closer. Remus continued, braver now. I won't. We... we don't have to stop, unless you want to. Sirius kissed him, full on the mouth again. Uh, eventually... He touched Sirius's hair one last time, pretending to push it back into place. They stared into each other's eyes, bold and unashamed for a few seconds. You're lovely, Sirius said, so softly. Remus could only smile back gently. He didn't know what to say. The room had grown cold. Come on, Sirius started, buttoning his trousers looking away. Finally, we'd better finish cleaning. Remus nodded, still mute. Unable to do much more than lean back against the wall as he watched Sirius wash his hands again and pick up the mop. The sight of him walking away was too familiar, and Remus burst out. You're not... so run off this time. Sirius looked back, a bit surprised, and a bit something else. I'm not going anywhere, Mooney. He spoke gently. Oh, okay. Good then. I felt bad about that last time. Sorry. He was on the other side of the room, and maybe that made it easier to talk. But I thought you'd be angry or something. I don't know. No, I wasn't. We're still friends, aren't we? Of course. We'll always be friends, Padfoot. Remus was making a promise, though his brain was too foggy to really recognise it at the time. Sirius had acknowledged it, however shyly, that whatever kept happening was probably going to happen again. He had assumed the role he always did, impulsive, expectant and irresponsible. For his part, Remus took up his own mantle, the one who would be responsible. He would keep the secrets, he would accept what he was given, he would be responsible. If those are the things he needs, Remus decided, then those are the things I could give him. It was nothing at all. Brave, Sirius had called him, in another bathroom, not so long ago. Remus hadn't known then whether or not he was, really. But he had liked the sound of it at the time. And he liked it even more now. Now, with the taste of Sirius still on his lips. As he watched Sirius finally sluicing down the far wall, encouraging the water down the drain with his mop, and glancing up to smile now and then, Remus realised that what he'd been waiting for all this time was for Sirius to be brave. What occurred to him, now, with the clarity of a lightning bolt, was that he, Remus, could be brave for both of them.